so we have a few minutes for a couple questions, if there are any. Good question. So, um, she said, what's the cut point for urine sodium? Actually, ironically, three studies, Testani, ours, and I just saw one that was published by Lynn Stevenson, and all have generally used 50 millimoles. 50 millimoles at one hour is about your cut point. So anything less than that suggests you're not peeing enough and you need more diuretic. Right, it's, it's, yeah, so it would be 50 millimoles per liter. It would be your concentration that you dip, or if you collect a whole liter of urine or the whole quantity should be at least 50 millimoles total sodium, five zero. Question in the back. Thanks, that was really great, your sick talks. Um, I think I remember seeing some studies looking at either um, plethoric IVC or presence of D-line as time of hospital discharge as predictors of recurrence. I'm wondering if you can refresh your memory as to what the data is and what you guys think of ultrasound-based endpoints uh, as a marker of adequate yeah, so I'll speak briefly to that, um, and I'm not an ultrasonographer, but you're right. So, right, so there's definitely data to suggest the patients who are still congested. Actually, the lung ultrasound data is um, better than the IVC data. Uh, part of that's just driven by habitus and ability to measure. But essentially, if you're volume overloaded by those metrics, then your outcomes are worse. The exact cut point for those, how many B lines, of course, depends on how you count and things like this. But essentially, if you have more, that's bad. So that's what we're doing for one of the studies that we've designed called Blushed, is actually we're going to target those B lines as a marker of congestion. So we know it's a bad prognostic marker, kind of like when people try to target BNP. We know it's bad, but lowering it at least so far hasn't shown that it leads to a better outcome. That's what we want to know. So if we actually lower it and don't let you go until it's lower, that's not the current study, but that would be the next one, would be to see, you know, does that improve the outcome? Yeah, we know, and Vicki Noble's study in dialysis patients, right, we know the measure is dynamic. It, you take volume off, and it's almost linearly correlated with your B lines going away. So hopefully if we take volume off adequately in heart failure, we see the same thing, but it hasn't been studied yet. Just to echo on that, no pun intended on the word, looking at the heart as well is, uh, is important. Uh, some of the stuff Mark Vavitt's doing at our shop, looking at strain imaging and acute heart failure. Uh, we always say the lung is kind of an innocent bystander in all of this. It just gets filled with fluid because of what's going on in the heart. So that, that cardiac and pulmonary access is critically important. Yeah, so you'd, you'd pick a treatment endpoint based on um, how much volume you think they have on board. What's their baseline weight? And, and, and target that over a four to five day period or three to four day per period, depending how aggressive you want to be. Now, my suggestion is what happens when your creatinine bumps and you're getting better is they might need a little bit of a diuretic holiday because they're, they've just exceeded their plasma refill rate. When they still have tons of congestion. It's just that you're doing such a good job making them pee it off that they're temporarily intravascularly depleted. So maybe you back off a little bit on the diuretics, but you pick a volume that you want to remove over a time period, and that's how you plug and chug on that diuretic formula. And when your creatinine bumps and you're getting better, you slow down a little bit, but it's not a time to stop and, and, and move them to the ICU. It's actually an expected outcome in several, a lot of these patients. It means you're actually diuresing them appropriately. You may not know their dry rate, or you may intermittently get, be getting to a period of you need to let them sort of reset in the hospital a little bit. And then when they leave the hospital decongested, that, that will be their new dry weight. And you only one day in operating room. Is that enough? No, I don't think so. Not for, these, not for patients who have 20 pounds of weight on board. It's going to take a long time, unfortunately. But actually, Chris O'Connor just published an article like this week saying, you know what? We need to take an extra day in the hospital. If they stay six days instead of five, get it right, get them dry, and get them home safely. Don't be in a hurry to get them out at 3.5 days just to have them come back. 
And just to add to that too, in your observation protocols, it's very important that you actually look at the amount of edema the patient has. So it's not just worsening renal function or all the other high risk markers that we look at, uh, positive troponins. If the patient's massively fluid overloaded, they are not going to do well in the OBS unit, or at least not turn around quickly. And if they do turn around quickly, it's probably too quickly and they're just going to bounce back. And, and I think it's hypotension, sig significant worsening of your renal function, and, you've, and for some reason you're not responding anymore. Your uh, serum sodium would be one. But to your answer your question about what drug you use, it's been set up to be used for Bumex and furosemide. Could you start them on an infusion? You sure could, but it's been designed to be used on the floor, and every time I put somebody on an infusion, they don't go to the floor. So it's really made for bolus of either Bumex or furosemide. Could you comment on the role of understanding um, valvular heart disease in, in heart failure and understanding what the mitral valve is doing and what the aortic valve is doing as well as um, the situation where you have people that are already pre-renal but total body fluid overloaded, intravascularly depleted, do you ever recommend albumin followed by um, Lasix? The valve question, thanks for asking that one, Chris. Uh, so with regard to valve, I mean, what we're talking about here is generally um, non-valvular heart failure. But if there's an ischemic component, you're often going to see some, uh, some mitral regurgitation that's related to ischemia itself, uh, patients who have underlying valvular disorders. If there's been a change in the valve, um, uh, the regurgitation or, or you know, stenosis or, or whatever it is, you know, that's really going to be the most important thing that you target. And you can diurese those guys all day long, but they're not going to get better. And in fact, you may uh, cause a, a quick precipitation uh, downward. So I'd say the valve patients, it's funny, we don't really talk about valve patients when we do this because they always get excluded from the trials. They always get treated as a different animal. Uh, and so there's not a heck of a lot of data out there on valve other than if it's a new blowing murmur, well, focus on getting that to the CT surgeon. But as far as... Um, uh, diuretic protocols, uh, we have nothing specific on that. I mean, your albumin question is a good one. I also don't have a, a quick or easy answer for you. Um, something that re somewhat related to this but not is actually there's a good Italian group that actually um, advocates giving hypertonic saline to patients. Um, so I, I think oftentimes, and for the sake of a quick talk, eight minutes, you know, we kind of simplify how this works. But I, I, based on your question, as you know, it's a very nuanced question. But oftentimes when we treat patients, we just want the quick qualitative answer of patient is red, so I want to give them yellow. And if they're green, I want to give them orange kind of idea. But I, I think your question is correct in the sense that I, I think it is nuanced. And it may be how we parse the patient population that really is the trick going forward. And then the fact that we lump them all together may be the reason why we fail. So I, I think just due to time, because I want to be respectful for the four o'clock group coming in, that we'll just have to um, cut it short. But if you have any other questions, we'd be happy to take them um, outside. But thank you all very much. Thank you.